Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us see how to use Hystrix Circuit Breaker and Hystrix Dashboard. What advantage does Hystrix provide to your application? Well, failure on a server sometimes can bring down the whole cluster. Because if there is a failure in the service, and let us say that there are thousands of requests flowing into the service which is failing or holding up the queue. What happens is, it will start eating up the threads in the servlet container. In other words, it will start to consume all the user threads in your Tomcat server. In this case, it prevents one service bringing down the whole cluster. It also provides you a fallback in case of some failures. It, it also isolates your service from the cluster by stopping all requests to this instance. It gives you real-time metrics about the service and it continuously monitors your instances. Now let us look at what is meant by circuit breaker. For this, you need to understand the electrical world's circuit breaker because the meaning is almost the same. A circuit breaker shuts off the electrical flow or strips your switch to protect the circuit from overheating and causing damage. Typically, in case of an overheating or in case of any you know, electrical malfunction, the circuit breaker shuts off your electrical flow you know, uh, so that it safeguards your electrical system. So, let us try to put this meaning into the software world. It prevents one service bringing down the whole cluster by opening up the circuit and isolating the service from other services. Almost same, right? Alright. Now, let us build an app and let us try to break it. Alright. To add your strict dependencies, uh, you can either create a project or add your uh, dependencies manually. So, in case of you are creating a new project, right? Uh, you know, just keep, let me just change the name anyway. I'm not going to use it. Uh, search for Hystrix. You would see two dependencies. One is the Hystrix and the other is the Hystrix dashboard. So add both of these dependencies to your, uh, you know, pom.xml. There's one more dependency that you need to add in order to stream your Hystrix data. That is the actuator. You need to add your actuator dependency to your Spring Boot application. If you don't add this, your Hystrix data will not be streamed for Hystrix to make use of and show you a dashboard. So you need to add this dependencies, which is mandatory. Okay. I already have a student service created in my previous project. So I manually went and added this Hystrix dashboard and Hystrix along with the actuator dependencies in it. Let us move on and take a look at our controller. Okay. So our controller, again, uh, you know, the same controller that we had in our config server uh, implementation. Uh, I have added a new method here, which is going to be a post mapping method. So it's going to accept a student object. And then what happens is like, it's going to save the student object to the database. Uh, and uh, it's going to save the student object information to the Cassandra database. So if you're looking for a Cassandra implementation, right? I already did a video on how to use Cassandra in Spring Boot. So you might want to take a look at that. So what I'm going to do here is like, I'm going to do a for loop. Uh, the easiest way for a developer to break a thing is like use a for loop. Okay. So I'm going to have a range between one to 10,000. Uh, every loop has to wait for half a second and then execute the save. There is going to be only one request, but it's, but it's going to run for, you know, uh, for a range of one to 10,000. So in my student service, what I have is like, uh, I have a save student information method, uh, inside the student information, save student information method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to call an external service, which is not available. Okay. So this particular uh, service is not available and it is not up and running. Okay. So if you don't noticed here, right, what I've done is like, I have added other rate of Hystrix command on top of this particular method. So this method will have a fallback method called fallback method for student service. And this fallback method for student service is going to be a replica of this save student information. So whatever parameters that you pass here, you can directly use it here also. And in the response, what I'm going to say is like our systems are under maintenance. We are unable to process your request now and send back the response. So in case of failure, we send back an elegant response to the end user. We don't send back an error, right? So this is this is one advantage uh, i almost forgot one thing uh, so let's go and take a look at our uh, application.java file uh, you need to enable two things here you need to enable at the rate of circuit breaker and at the rate of hystrix dashboard 
in order to enable Hystrix completely in your application. All right, uh, let me let me go ahead and start this service, and then let us try to break this. Okay. Okay. I'm starting my Eureka server. Since my student service is mapped to a cloud config server, I need to start the cloud config server and then the student service so that it doesn't result in an error. Okay, uh, all the three services are up and running. Let's move on to Postman and try to break the system. Okay, before we move on to uh, uh, Postman, I want to quickly show you something here. Let me quickly go to my port where the student service is running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an Hystrix streams URL. Okay, this is nothing but uh, it gives continuous stream of metrics uh, by continuously monitoring the instance. So let me quickly show you what happens now. At this moment, the application is not accepting any request or sending back any response. Let us see how Hystrix continuously monitors our application now. I'm going to uh, hit this URL now. You see here, it's continuously pinging, uh, sending a ping request to our application, and it is continuously monitoring our application. So this is this is the Hystrix stream. There's one important thing here, guys. If you're using Spring 2, right, uh, the actual URL is uh, actuator slash Hystrix dot stream. If you're using a version less than 2, right, you don't have to include this actuator. You can directly, you know, uh, directly use Hystrix dot stream with your URL. So this is one important thing. Uh, please make a note depending upon the version you use. Okay, and let us take a look at our Hystrix dashboard now. All right. So this is our Hystrix dashboard, and uh, you need to feed this stream URI here in order to take a look at the graphical interface of how the uh, you know, request comes in, and what are the errors? What are the uh, you know failures happening? How the circuit has you know, opened up? Uh, whether the circuit is closed or not? So all this information you can see here. So for now, we don't have anything. So let me try to feed this here, and let me try to click on monitor stream. Let's see what happens now. Nothing happens because the system is like doesn't have any request coming in so it's it will keep on loading it will just keep on loading now let us go to a postman and let us try to break the system all right so for this example i thought it would be a very good idea to show you the browser and the postman you know in parallel to each other so that you will be able to see the difference so i have the request here an id and a name for the student object i'm going to click on send so what did we have in our code when a request comes in it's going to iterate for you know for a range of one to ten thousand with a sleep of half a second and it will try to save the request but in the save method of the service we have a http rest template call that makes a call to a service which does not exist in our system so it's obviously going to fail and it's going to fail for for a range of one to ten thousand with a half a second delay let us try to you know Recreate that here and let us see how our Strix dashboard works. I'm going to click on send. All right, so do you see the information loaded here? Uh, we have the save student information that is the method here, and you could see here the errors. It has already gone 15, 19, and let us, let us give some time. All right, you could see here, right? Uh, the circuit has already opened up now. So now the limit has reached uh, you know, 20 and now the circuit, right, it automatically tries to isolate this application, uh, you know, from, from the request. Or it will try to isolate the system uh, from, you know, from further failures and bringing down the whole system. Uh, so and, and it will also continuously monitor this application, uh, you know, and once it is stable enough if it sticks things that application has reached a stable point right then it will close the circuit and it will again accept the request so let us give it some time all right guys uh, i had to pause the video because it took a long time to you know 
to stabilize because I put a range for 1 to 10,000 with a half a second delay, right? It was going on forever, so I had to stop the video. And now, uh, you know, after that, every request has been processed or it has been examined, right? You could see here the circuit has been now closed and it is ready to accept, you know, a uh, request to the it, to the instance. That means that it tricks things that our instance is stable enough now to accept the requests. With this, we have completed this uh, video. In our next uh, video, we're going to look at one of the cool features of Spring Cloud. Uh, we are going to look at Zool Server.